Hey guys, I have here an APC 20 amp transfer switch. This is a rack mount switch, model number AP7752. I picked this up on eBay for fairly cheap about a week or two ago. We're going to get this installed in the home lab uh, Chia Farming rack. However, I thought it might make an interesting video to take a look at this, even though it may be a bit quick, because I believe this not only has applications in the server space, but also in the solar space. Uh, so let's take a look at what we got. Uh, so this transfer switch has two AC inputs. So you would connect these to two different sources and this switch would switch between these two sources. So you can set the priority. Now this did come with these L5-20 uh, locking plugs. This is a 20 amp plug and you can see based on the teeth here, it's more of an industrial type plug. It would go into a receptacle and then twist to lock it into place. I didn't need that. I wanted a standard plug. This is a 20 amp receptacle. Uh, it's a 5-20 so taking a look at the top of the unit here, again, this is model number AP7752, 120 volt, 16 amp. It is a 20 amp transfer switch, but because we derate continuous loads by 80%, that gives us 16 amps. You know, that derating is standard on any wiring circuit, pretty much. So taking a look at the front of the unit here, we have two inputs, they are A and B. We have arrows that are pointing to an output indicator, so we can see specifically which input the power is using, whether it's A or B. We have a preference switch, we can choose whether or not we want it to prefer A or B. On the right hand side here, we have an amps indicator, a data selection switch. We have an RJ45 for network connectivity, so you can do remote configuration and monitoring and we have a serial port for local configuration. Uh, so taking a look at the back of this device, we just have our two inputs here, A and B, and then we have a series of 10 20 amp receptacles where you can plug in your servers or other appliances. Now I'm particularly curious about whether or not this device can be used as a UPS. So instead of having a lead acid battery UPS, if I can plug one of these into like an off-grid inverter and then plug the other one of these into the grid power. Now I couldn't find a specific rating on transfer time for this, however the user's manual states the transfer time from one source to the other is seamless to the connected equipment as the switching occurs safely between two import sources regardless of any phase differences. Uh, so of course we're going to open it up and take a look at what's inside before we get it racked up. And by the way, I did want to note that the cabling on this unit is no joke. Sometimes you get pieces of equipment and the wiring is very thin, it's underrated, you can just tell it's cheap junk. Um, this is very thick cabling, it's 12 gauge, definitely quality cabling, and I would expect nothing less from APC. Look at that, very cool. Alright, so now that I've taken a few minutes to study this, uh, here is how I believe this is working. So we have our two AC input lines coming in here, we have A and B, and you can see we've got a pair of relays here for each input. Now I believe these are isolation relays, on the side of this it does say uh, the coil is 120 volts, so I believe these relays will engage when the device is plugged in and then disengage when you unplug it just to make sure that those male plugs at the end do not have power on them for safety purposes. So then we have uh, two pair of relays down here and I believe what's happening is the first relay is switching between the two sources and then the second relay in each pair is switching the output on and off. So again we have that isolation protection. So for example I can see on both of the neutrals here you can see the large trace comes into this relay and then the large trace for the neutral comes out and goes into this relay. Then this relay passes to this relay and then you can see the output of this relay goes up here to the output neutral. Uh, both of these are the line switching relays. We can't exactly see the traces. They come out to this yellow capacitor and then stop. However, I do believe they're both going into this relay on the underside of the circuit board, similar to what we see over here then being passed to this relay, which you can see the run here. The output of this relay is going through. This is a current transformer, so this is what's actually metering the amount of current for the front reporting display. And then that's going over here to the output hot lead. So there would be a bit of interruptive time with these uh, switching of relays. However, I do notice that they have capacitors both on each input, and then they have what appears to be a combined capacitor here. So I don't know if these capacitors are smoothing out that voltage and smoothing out that you know, difference in phase between the two sources. That's how I believe it's working. However, uh, I am not an electrical engineer. Otherwise, on the bottom right here, we see the front display, the RJ45 connections. There is a modular standoff board here. I'm not quite sure what that's for. That might be the CPU or the control circuit. We've got two transformers. Uh, presumably, these are step-down transformers to supply the voltage to the circuit board. I do believe this is run by approximately 24 volts, and that's about the extent of what I can tell based on these components in here. All right, so I pulled out the old UPS and set it on the side there. You can see I've got the new transfer switch here racked in the bottom of the rack. 
Uh, everything in the rack is shut down except for the networking equipment there at the top. And before I move some plugs around, I just wanted to test how this works. You can see I've got some incandescent light bulbs over here. So I'm just going to unplug each source and verify that it transfers correctly. I believe it's now working. I did have a little bit of drama getting it to work. I don't know if, you know, if it was a firmware issue. I did update the firmware or some of the components. I don't know what the deal was. It wasn't transferring the first time, but I think I have it working now. So let's just double check before we plug in our components. All right, so I'm going to unplug source A, and you can see it switched to source B. I'm going to plug back in source A. Now I can unplug source B, and you see it switched to source A. So it does appear to be transferring correctly, and it does appear to be transferring fairly quick. We just see a slight dim of the light bulbs. All right, so I've got all of these servers plugged into the back of the transfer switch. Everything is running as expected. Uh, you can see all of the disk arrays and the servers have started back up and are operational again. Taking a look at the front of our transfer switch, we have uh, source A selected as the priority. And for some reason it's difficult to see the LED on camera, but it is showing 7 amps on the display there. Now you may be asking how this is working with only one source of power and where my second source of power is coming from. And this is where it gets really cool. So I wired two 20 amp dedicated circuits back to the server rack. One comes off my home grid mains panel. The other one comes off my off-grid solar system. So I have two power sources completely independent from one another. And you can see here where I made that happen. The drop on the left is for the grid power and the drop on the right is for the solar power. So I've got A plugged into grid and B plugged into solar. So let's say we had a grid failure and uh, the power goes out for source A. You can see the servers are still running and the transfer switch has switched to input B. So now we can plug A back in and we see we have power on source A again but it hasn't switched back just yet. It's delayed for a few seconds here. And there you go, you saw and heard it switch back to source A. And this is where it gets super cool here. So let's say it's a bright sunny day, my 60 kilowatt hour battery is full and I have excess energy which does happen a lot during the summer. So all I need to do is simply come down here and press this preference button to B Wait approximately a minute. Oh, it was pretty quick, and you can see it switched to source B. So now this entire rack, this entire rack is being powered by completely off-grid power with the press of a simple button. And how do I know it's actually working? Because now I can come over here to my solar display for my solar system, and I can see I'm pulling approximately a 1,000 watt load here between these two figures, and I can see the load spiking here on the bottom right. All right, so I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I don't have to worry about lead acid batteries. You know, the more and more I was looking at the cost of UPSs and the cost of the battery replacement, and it just seems silly to me because I've got all these lithium iron phosphate batteries sitting everywhere. I can't put them in the UPSs because the UPSs aren't designed for lithium iron phosphate, so I might as well figure out some kind of way to make it work. Um, now, this does have some disadvantages that are important to note. While this transfer switch is designed to transfer these particular type of applications, it's designed for server and communication equipment, it does not replace a traditional UPS. So a quality server grade UPS will do double conversion. And what that means is it's stepping the incoming AC down to DC and then stepping it back up to AC. And it does that because it's, it's filtering the AC and, it, and it's making it cleaner power, right? So you're not having the brownout type blips, you're not having the voltage spikes it'll boost voltage it'll decrease voltage if it's too high you know that is one disadvantage i think it'll work well for this particular setup all of these pieces of equipment most likely have switching type power supplies in them which are typically smoothed out by capacitors so i think they'll have no problem handling the small blips created by this transfer switch flicking one direction or the other and of course like i said this does have use cases in non-server environments if you've got a solar system set up and you want to switch a you know an appliance back and forth between the grid and uh, you know your solar system i definitely would not do it with an inductive load it would have to be a resistive load but you could use this for that purpose as well and then lastly the coolest part is this has a very nice web interface and you can switch sources a and b using uh, web HTTP calls, which I think I can probably mimic using like a curl script or something out of PHP. So I'll most likely be able to automate switching solar on and off, you know, from my battery and BMS using a curl script or something similar. That'll be a future project, maybe a future video. Please hit that like button before you go. Questions or comments, you can leave those as well. And thanks for watching.